What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number six of our Detroit Lions franchise. You guys saw last week's episode. We got a W against the Carolina Panthers. You can see it in the upper left-hand corner. 24-13 was the final score. Lions won, obviously, 20-19. to And today is Thanksgiving. Today is Thanksgiving morning. So good morning, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. This is a Thanksgiving Day special. Normally, we do upload these. Me and Slacker, we upload these games on Sunday nights. But since today is Detroit Lions football day on Thanksgiving, their annual Thanksgiving Day game, I'm deciding, he's deciding, we've come to an agreement that I'm going to upload this on Thursday. And if you guys want to go check out his Chiefs franchise in this duo franchise, I would recommend that you do so because look at that. Look at that score there, 40-37, to right, against the Rams. Obviously, the Rams won in a shootout. I mean, that game was absolutely amazing, guys. Absolutely amazing. But this has been pretty true to how the Chiefs have been playing, and he's got it He's got it going on with that franchise series. So there's a lot of detail, a lot of analysis, a lot of standings updates. He does go over some schedules and statistics as well. I should probably do that a little bit better. And uh, it's a really good franchise he's got going on over there. So I urge you guys to go check that out if you want to see how both of us are doing in this franchise series. So as I said, guys, this is a Thanksgiving Day special. So enjoy the turkey. Enjoy the, enjoy the family. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the time off, right? Because we got Lions football here coming up in the next, uh, well, hour or so, right? So sit back, relax, enjoy this to prep you for that game is what I'm really getting at. So let's go ahead and scout some college players first and kind of get that done and over with. And last week was pretty interesting because I actually scouted a lot of offensive linemen, and so was Slacker. Slacker was actually scouting some offensive linemen as well, a lot of right guards, which is exactly what I did. And we never can see each other's videos until they're ready and posted. So obviously when we're making them at the same time, we can't watch and see how every, what everybody's doing, right? So pretty interesting that we both decided to go that direction so I'm actually gonna scout some left tackles in this episode because I do feel that Taylor Decker is kind of taking a step backward and you know being in the league for two to three years at this point for Taylor Decker and he's had some shoulder injuries he's had some injuries that have really kind of hampered him and and really hurt him in his production we got to start thinking about it possibly a third rounder like Kajusti or Kajusti, Yadni Kajusti, maybe even a right tackle that we can move over to left tackle, right? There's Bobby Evans. He's a power guy. Caleb McGrary, uh, J. Juan Taylor from Florida. So these are some pretty, I don't know, pretty harsh ratings on these guys. I mean, I think there was somebody, I think Paco, Paco, I, I believe you were telling me that with that franchise, guys, draft class there's not a lot of 75s not a lot of 75s not a lot of a lot of high 70s it's like a low 70 type of players and uh, I, I think that that's I mean that's grindy that's grindy it's not too casual which is which is really what uh, that franchise guy is all about he did work for pro football focus right so it's definitely got that feel to it and I'm gonna just stick with some offensive linemen here we're gonna still gonna go with Wisconsin type of guys here Michael Dieter Left guard, power guy, six foot six at the guard position, impact block, run block. This is gonna that would be huge for us, especially as Stafford kind of gets a little bit older. We can start utilizing Carry on Johnson a little bit more, the Garrett Blunt. I don't know how long he's gonna be around though, uh, Detroit, but the point remains that would be a pretty good pick. I don't know where he's gonna end up, though. I mean, if we look at the all positions, it looks like he is all the way down at number 18. So we might be able to grab him. Might be a really good pick for us here down the road. Obviously, I want to take a look at like Andre Dillard or possibly Greedy Williams to help out Darius Slay. But yeah, we, we definitely need to focus on some other positions here in next episode. And, uh, and, and we'll do that. We'll definitely do that. All right, next order of business is to just go ahead and check out the standings here real quick, guys. NFC North is really really tied up look at the chiefs here 10 and 1 right now the saints 7 2 and 1 the texans 7 and 3 this is 
near the top, it's pretty re realistic, right? The Texans are, in fact, 7-3 and three in real life. The Titans, I think they're 6-4 and four now. I think they dropped that game uh, just recently against the Colts. The Browns at 7-3 flip that, and that's what they are. The Giants, not so much. 49ers, not so much. Cowboys, uh, they're five and five. Ravens need to. Well, the Ravens are six and four. Colts. So this is pretty. This is kind of accurate. There's a couple teams down here, like obviously the Bears, um, the Raiders don't don't have five wins. You know, the Packers are kind of struggling right now. The Redskins should be a little bit higher, but for the most part, well, ooh, yeah, four and seven for the Rams. For the most part, it's 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 right in the middle. It's right in the middle, and obviously this is off. This is a sim. You know, you're not going to get exact results. But if we can take a look here at the NFC North here, 5-5 five and five are the Bears, Lions, and the Vikings, or Packers. Vikings are 4-6. and six. So it's anybody's division. It's anybody's division. And I probably shouldn't have backed out of that, but I did anyway. So let's check out the AFC West for Slacker. It's, it's pretty much his division. It's the Chiefs division all the way. There's nothing, no qualms about it. No issues here. <laughs> He's got it wrapped up. Unless he goes on a terrible, terrible losing streak and the Raiders somehow go on a miraculous winning streak. I doubt that anything like that's going to happen, though. Saints, 7-2-1. Looks like they've got a good hold on the NFC South. Giants, Cowboys, and Redskins. Eagles at 1-9. Good Lord. Um, it looks like it's going to be the Cowboys and the Giants. Redskins could possibly make a run, but not. To, I'm not counting on it. I'm not really counting on that. 49ers, Cardinals, Seahawks, Rams. Could be anybody's division there as well. AFC North, the Browns. The Browns. Bengals and Ravens, well up for grabs. AFC South, the Titans and the Texans. And Colts, three teams in that race. AFC East, ooh. I remember I was talking about it's the Patriots and everybody else. Well, the Bills are 5-5, five and five, the Dolphins are 5-5, five and five, and the Pats are 5-5. Five and five. So just like the AFC North, or the NFC North, this is this is going to be pretty interesting come down to the wire unless the Patriots can, like, you know, just totally get on that big-time winning streak that we know that they can pull off and uh, win that division. So there are your standings, guys. Let's get ahead and uh, let's get, ahead and get in that get in that game here. 12.30. There we go. Why is it a.m.? 12.30 a.m.? They're playing at... Playing in the morning? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> that is <laughs> Guys, Madden can't even get that right. They can't even get that right. They say 12.30 a.m. at Ford Field, but look at the very top left corner. 12.30 p.m. Oh, I swear, this game is comical. It just makes it just... Oh my god, it's funny. All right, well, with that said, you know what? I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the EA developers to put that in that game, to put that in this game. That made me laugh. I'm thankful for EA, for EA to make me laugh. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get into this gameplay against the Bears. All right, guys, you know what time it is. It is time for some Thanksgiving Day football here between the Detroit Lions and the Chicago Bears, the Bears, and the Detroit Leones. Guys, we're sitting here at 5-5. Five and five. The Bears are currently 5-5. Five and five. This is a huge game for the NFC North in this simulation. Now, for the Detroit Lions in real life, well, they get Chase Daniel, right? We don't have Marvin Jones going today. We don't have Kerryon Johnson going today. So although some things in this simulation might be a little bit off, compared to what's going on in real life. I tried to do my best as far as the uniforms are concerned. So we get the football here to start off the Thanksgiving Day kickoff 2018. And guys, I'm looking to do some damage early with Matthew Stafford and this defense for the Chicago Bears because you know what? We got to attack. We got to attack them early. Don't let them dictate and don't let them set the tone of the game so you guys can see here already the first play of the game we're sending kenny galladay deep on this play action pass here and look at this chicago doesn't know what the heck hit him here great catch great throw the bench is saying no 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 he didn't get that in oh yeah he did he's kenny galladay he is 
Megatron Jr., right? There's another nickname out there that I totally forgot, but I think that it's catching on in Detroit for Kenny Galladay, and I, I actually I actually like it, so I, I, I need to look that up, and I'm going to start using it a little bit more. But we saw that Stafford was incomplete, and basically it was a pretty bad throw. Pretty bad throw. That's going to be a recurring theme in this game. I'll just let you guys in on that little hint here. I mean, look at this throw. This is right on the money. That's where it needed to be. Nice throw. Nice catch by Marvin Jones to get a big-time gain. It's going to be first and 10. Stafford feeling the pocket. That's what I'm talking about. There's an incomplete pass right there. That's now two very inaccurate throws by Matthew Stafford. Again, it's going to be a recurring issue in this game. I can promise you that. So on second and 10, Riddick is going to get six yards on that carry. It's going to set up third and four, trying to make something happen. Deep to Malcolm Mitchell. And there you go again, guys. So the deep accuracy for Stafford just on these sort of crossing routes across the field is just not quite there right now. So he had a touchdown. Malcolm Mitchell had his guy beat. There's no safety there to help out. That was a definite touchdown left on the board for Detroit. So Prater's going to come out and kick that field goal. We are good. Trubisky is getting the start. I know that he's hurt in real life, but he's not hurt in this sim, so just kind of go with it. But he's having not too bad of a season. He was he was decent in our game in Chicago that we lost by, of course, one point. So re keeping with the recurring theme here, even against Minnesota, we lost by one point. Tariq Cohen and Jordan Howard, the running backs, we're going to have to watch out for these guys. You know, Trubisky likes to do a lot of crossing routes, a lot of drags, a lot of, a lot of slants and, and check downs. So he's, he's that West Coast type of quarterback, right? He's not going to really throw it deep a whole bunch on you, right? So we got to definitely try to play a little bit of zone, sprinkle in a little bit of blitz, a, a man blitz, you know, really get him to feel under pressure, try to get the throw off and uh, make an inaccurate pass. But utilizing that run game is what, they, what they've been doing here in this sim a lot lately. And we can see that Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen are splitting some carries here. They're already up to the 18-yard line. And Trubisky, inaccurate throw there. That should have been a penalty, in my opinion. Taylor Gabriel actually was out of bounds, came back in bounds, caught the football. That's illegal touching. Should have been pushing them back. I don't know if it would have pushed them back far enough to where Cody Parkey wouldn't have made it. But nice catch there by Kenny Galladay on third and 10. Stafford now 5 of 10. You can see his inaccuracies going on in this in this football game. And Galladay really helped his helped him out for sure. Galladay helped him out. His receiver, Stafford's receiver, was for sure uh, helping him out there on that pretty, pretty wild pass throw right there. But look at that. Even to Luke Wilson. Right, that just over over his head. He was wide open on that wheel route and just couldn't make it happen. Stafford throwing complete though to Kenny Galladay, who makes another big catch for the Lions offense. Still three to three here, first quarter, a minute forty, and look at Khalil Mack bearing in on Stafford and unprotected was Matthew, and he's gonna go down. So Stafford and the Lions are gonna have to settle for another field goal. It's six to three now, and the, as the first quarter comes to an end. Jordan Howard runs out of bounds and is going to pick up well more than the first down and what they needed. So third and seven now. Here's a situation that we can get a stop, and we do. As great play out there by Tavon Wilson to knock the ball loose. So we get the football back here. LeGarrette Blunt checks in for the first carry of the game for him in the second quarter. One rush for 16 yards. So LeGarrette Blunt in that Lions offensive line pushing forward, pushing through. Getting the job done. I like it. I love it. But we need more of it. Luke Wilson going to get that hook route. Nice job there by him. Carry on Johnson. Going to get stopped short. And we're going to go right back to him. He's going to get the first down and more. So we're starting to run the football a little bit here against this Bears defensive front. And Stafford is going to actually take it by himself. And pick up the first down. That's one rush for 10 yards. First and 10 after that play. And Stafford, look at this, on the crossing route to Galladay again, guys. Cannot complete the pass. It's going to be second and 10. And he's not really even under any pressure right now. Just for whatever reason, that deep to that mid to deep accuracy right now is just not there. So we got to focus a little more on the short, quick passing routes. I mean, those comeback routes he can hit. But look at Marvin Jones. Look at Marvin Jones with the moves. He fell down. He fell down coming back on that comeback route to make the catch. Got back up, did a juke, dives into the end zone to avoid the safety. Look at this. Down, juke, 
Go, baby. Go, baby. Go. Turn on the Jets. Get in the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. It's going to be 13 to 3 now here late in the second quarter. We got 348 to go, and Sims is going to take it all the way, guys. So that one hurts. That one hurts really bad. 53 yard strike on what should have probably been an easy tackle to be made. And yet again, go shooting for TJ Jones up the middle. Actually, no. He was not shooting for TJ Jones. He was shooting for Theo Riddick on that on that angle route, and he was and he threw it over his head to TJ Jones, and he couldn't even make the catch. So yet again, the inaccuracies are showing here, and Detroit's gonna have to punt the football back to Chicago. Still 13 to 10. And as we see here, Tariq Cohen's gonna pick up the first down here. 46 seconds left. Matt Nagy, head coach, calls a timeout. Still 46 seconds to go, 13 to 10. And we're bringing a little bit of pressure here, bringing the blitz. Taylor Gabriel makes a reception, a little bit short of the first down marker here. Second and one with 29 seconds left to go. Chicago is not using their timeout right now, trying to use it for the later seconds of the second quarter. And look at this, Tease Tabor comes up huge, totally reads the route, picks Trubisky off, and guys, that's pretty much going to end the second quarter, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet, but we're trying to shoot for this end zone, trying to get a big play that's going to pop. And, of course, as we try to run one, we get a holding call on TJ Lang. So it's going to set us back. It's going to set us back, of course, right? Ten more yards. Actually, with, with the result of the play, it's going to be first and 17. And as Kerryon Johnson tries to get up, the field it's going to be a face mask call right so we're going to get a little bit of that yardage back with six no no excuse me holding call holding call against frank Ragnow. so now second and 17 that's a loss of down six seconds to go do a little play action play try to do it it's almost like a hail mary in this game right we're going to find tj jones for a big game but it's not going to be enough i was hoping for like him to break a tackle and go all the way it could have happened Never know unless you try, and just didn't, just didn't. So we go into the half with a 13 to 10 lead, where it's a pretty close game, guys. Rushing and passing yards wise, defenses are playing pretty solid. Quarterbacks are, you know, missing some receivers downfield. Big play here by Ezekiel Ansah to get it to third and 19. So Detroit gets the football. We don't do anything with our possession. Chicago now back with the football here, third and 10, and he's gonna find Taylor Gabriel, but look at this, pass incomplete as Quandre Diggs with the pass breakup. So I like what I see there, but look at Stafford trying to find Galladay. Trying to find Galladay, and he can't. He led him out there way too far, and Detroit's gonna have to give the football back to Chicago yet again. Here's a nice run by Jordan Howard only going to get about maybe about three yards there. Third and seven. Trubisky's going to find Allen Robinson for a big first down with 2.45 left to go here in the third quarter. About a minute 40 left to go now. Jordan Howard on this reception not going to be good enough. So Chicago gives the football back to Detroit. So it's like a two heavyweights here trying to punch each other back, you know, punch each other in the mouth here. we got to go back, regroup, come back. Keep fighting. So we see that Stafford and the Lions try to shoot for that play yet again, and Galladay just can't get there, guys. He's leading them too far. Stafford's leading them too far. And then when we try to go to the underneath route, nothing doing. Going to find TJ Jones, though, on this play, and we do get the first down, but guess what? A flag. A flag. We keep going to the same play because we know that it's working. It's working against this defense, but we always seem to – there's always something that's going on here to set us back. So it's going to be third and 20 after this holding call by Eric Decker. So third and 20, same play. Check out Galladay. He's open now. Is he going to make the catch? He is. Galladay, huge gain with 37 seconds left. And Stafford finally gets on page with Galladay, and we get that first down. We get that big play that we wanted here, right? Same play. Same play, and look at this, but guess what? We're going to use the comeback route. We're going to audible Galladay to a comeback. He's going to get a 20-yard reception here, and look, look at this, look at this. Same play, same play, but guess what? Wilson going on a fly, opens up that safety, and check out Kenny Galladay with the huge reception. Ball was floating 
all the way down to the ground and Galladay was able to position himself perfectly to make that catch. Did it touch the ground though? That's the question. They are reviewing it, but it looks like for the first couple seconds there, he does have possession of it. He gets his hand underneath the football. It's going to stand, guys. It's going to be 20 to 10 Detroit with 727 left to go here. Here's a reception to Tariq Cohen. It's going to be third and three. A little run to Jordan Howard. And look at this, guys. Nobody's going to catch him. That's Christian Jones and Glover Quinn. And guys, no match. No match. You can't catch Jordan Howard when you're that quick. And here's Carrion Johnson when Detroit gets the football back. He's going to fumble the football, guys. So a huge swing in momentum here, possibly, if Chicago can get a touchdown on this drive. Right? Not good. Trey Burton almost going to get a first down here. Second and 10. Now third and inches after this play. 421 left to go. And a false start penalty is going to get called on Chicago. It's going to set them back to about third and five. So here we go, third and five. Huge situation here for Detroit's defense and these Detroit fans who came out in droves to go watch their team play on Thanksgiving. Only going to get a yard to Sims out there on the left. He's, he will roll out of bounds. 413 left to go as Cody Parkey kicks this up and good. So now we got a tie football game here. It's been, like I said, it's been like, like a slugfest going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Here's Theo Riddick getting a carry at 334. Personal foul, face mask being called on Chicago. It's going to send us all the way up to the 48-yard line here at 3rd and 11. 3rd and 11. Stafford trying to get our guys in a field goal position, and Theo Riddick makes the reception on the angle route. Nagy calls that timeout. Pretty smart to do that. Gives his offense a chance with two more timeouts to go and a, a lot of time left in order to try to get a touchdown. Good job by the Bears defense, though, to shut us down and only settle for the field goal. We've got a minute 26 seconds left, guys. 23 to 20. Defense has to come through. Enough pressure on Trubisky here. If Deshaun Hand probably got his head turned around, that was probably going to be an interception. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Probably should have been a pick to end the game. So a minute 23 here, third and 10. Big down here for Detroit and Chicago each trying to vie for this W here and making plays and look at this pass complete but incomplete as Christian Jones knocks the receiver out of bounds knocks him out of bounds in midair here's Tease Tabor trying to make a nice play on the receiver but guess what the back shoulder throw by Trubisky is going to pick up the first down Trubisky trying to roll to the right he's only going to get a couple yards though it's actually one yard to be exact. So it's second and nine. Second and nine. Nevin Lawson with the tackle. 47 seconds left. 46, not actually 36, excuse me, at the 47 yard line. False start penalty is going to be called on Chicago. It's going to push him back now. Second and 14. Things are starting to line up here for Detroit, but we got to come through. We got to play our zones and make this thing happen. Out of bounds throw by Trubisky. Unreal. He can't seem to find it right now, guys. That's, that's two big incompletions and some pretty uh, contested throws here on this drive. On a third and 14, false start yet again. So now third and 19. Got some zone coverage here. And Trubisky firing it out to the sidelines to Anthony Miller. And guys, nice play by Nevin Lawson with the deflection. So now fourth and 19. You can't be doing this. Can't be doing this. A false start yet again. So the Detroit crowd really roaring out here at Ford Field, confusing and disrupting this offense for Trubisky and the Bears. Fourth and 24 now, firing it deep out there, and Slay has got Anthony Miller covered, guys. It's going to be picked off. And guess what? The Detroit Lions are going to come back home, and they're going to win this football game. Now we got two wins straight in a row. Beat Carolina here at home. Beat Chicago here at home, and a pretty big game for this team. We are now in sole possession of first place in the NFC North. Obviously, the Minnesota Vikings, the Packers are really trailing us right behind us. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet, but guys, for now, for Thursday, for today, for week four, for week 12, we're in first place. So you guys can see the statistics there. Checking out the Lions here. 16 of 32 for Stafford. Two touchdowns, 50%. He just didn't really seem to have it, guys. I don't know what that's about really don't a lot of those throws i can usually make um i'm not even even manipulating the control stick 
I'm really not. So I don't know what was going on with Stafford in this game. Must have been the pressure from the Bears D-line. I'm not sure. But guys, we will see you. Slacker and I will see you in the next episode of this series on Sunday night at 8 p.m. I'll see you guys then. As always, peace.